Hi guys, how are you? So today I wanted to restart my Missing Murdered Indigenous Women series. I took a bit of a break just because I had a lot going on with myself um, and just dealing with my own mental health and trying to stay positive and not go crazy in quarantine. So I have taken some time off. Also, I just feel like, I don't know, these cases really just hit home for me. So it does take a toll on my happiness, I guess you could say, because it is very upsetting and these cases are never good news. They are interesting and it's good to know the facts so you can spot similarities among other cases. But at the end of the day, we are still talking about missing, murdered indigenous people. So it's never a light topic. It's never an easy topic. It's nothing that is like happy news or anything. So this case is just that. We are going to be talking about the case of Misty Upham. And if you guys don't know who she is, she was a Native American actress who was pretty successful for how young she was. She featured in films like Skins and Frozen River. She experienced a lot of things that I think a lot of people can relate to. And somehow she still was able to stay strong and pursue her dreams. And that's really the message I want to send here. So let's take you back to Misty's upbringing and how she became a Native American actress and how she pursued her dreams to become a successful actress, which was her lifelong dream, was to make it to Hollywood and to show other Native American girls that it is possible and you can be a star. Regardless of your ethnicity, regardless of your background or where you came from, you can chase your dreams and you can end up in Hollywood doing what you love. So Misty was born on July 6, 1982 in Kalisville, Montana. Her parents were born in the time where it was encouraged for Native American parents to send their children to boarding schools, which sounded good at the beginning because basically after Native Americans saw what happened when they went against the United States government or the colonizers was basically you get largely massacred hundreds of your people die babies die children die families die so this is all after basically the war that made America today this is after that so basically after the government tried to kill off every last native there was they put a bounty on their head they said that they were savages and that you would basically get rewarded to kill them if you were out and about um, basically they wanted to exterminate all Native Americans so they could have their country with their people on it and basically the natives were in the way because they were native to America and just so happened to be living here so after all that, after the government killed off most Native Americans, for them to no longer be a problem in society, they came up with this plan for the remaining survivors to acclimate them into everyday society. Because according to the colonizers and the founding fathers, Native Americans, they didn't speak English, they didn't go to school, they didn't have jobs, they didn't have money. So they're over here like they can't even fathom how these people are just so like because who doesn't want money and who doesn't want these things and who doesn't want a superficial life. So once they stripped these people away from their natural way of life and moved them to where they wanted them to be on reservations, then the government came up with a plan to turn these poor little savage Native American children into normal everyday Americans. So they would come by and basically the parents of these children were forced because they had already witnessed what happens when you say no. You get murdered, your children get murdered, your house gets burned to the ground. That's what happens when you say no. So they've already witnessed all this. So when the government now comes and tells you, we're gonna give, you guys are a little, you know, kind of helpless, but your children, your children can be the future. Let us take your children to these, con to these boarding schools, concentration camps is what I like to call them. Let us take all of your children, we'll watch them, we'll feed them, we'll teach them how to be Americans, we'll teach them how to speak, we'll teach them how to write, we'll teach them how to be civilians, how to earn currency, we'll teach them how to get a job, 
We'll do all these things for your children so that they don't grow up to just be savages and not know how to survive in our society. Really, because they weren't surviving perfectly fine before you guys came along, and now look at the world. <sighs> Anyways, this hits really home to me because my dad's sister, my aunt, actually went to one of these schools, and she has told me what it's actually like in there. And before this, I had no idea that these things were even a thing until she told me that she actually went to one. And basically what they do at these schools is they take in all these native children, they cut their hair because they're not allowed to have long hair because it's part of their religion, which is funny. Everything that the US is based on, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, natives didn't get that. They were actually forced into concentration camps as young children to have their heritage stripped away they would immediately cut their hair off sometimes shave the boy's head they would cut the girl's hair like as if they were in the military you know like up to here they weren't allowed to speak in their native tongue anymore if you were caught speaking in your native language you would have gotten a huge beating with a paddle they had jail-like cells where they could put children in as punishment. As you could guess, a bunch of unattended Native American children with no parents around, just the government. They were subject to rape, violence, beatings. They were basically tortured and they weren't allowed to leave, <clears throat> just like how you have to go to school now or it's against the rules. They weren't allowed to leave. They had gates as if it was a prison. If you looked on the outside, you would think it was a prison, not a boarding school for Native American children. It was very secretive. It was in the middle of nowhere where it was a big drive to get out there, just like a prison. And they basically stripped these poor children at a very young age of everything that they knew, any way of survival, any language, their heritage, their religion, what they believed in, that was all taken away from them. It was forced for them to learn how to write, read, speak, make money and work for the government. That was what these schools were made for. Turn these Native American children into normal everyday Americans so we can deal with them and so we don't have to kill them anymore. Basically, that's what happened. It was kind of like a deal for not just completely obliterating the entire Native American society as we know it and just killing every Native that they see. They decided to show some mercy after already killing and murdering hundreds and thousands of Native American children to now give these people a chance. Give these people a chance to be regular everyday Americans. And I guess it somewhat worked. But when you think about how many thousands of years that they had these cultures, languages, powwows, just everything that went into their culture and what they believed in and how they survived. Could you imagine someone just coming in and saying, nope, can't talk like that, can't wear your hair like that, you're not allowed to use that language, you have to learn our language, you're going to learn to read, you're going to learn to write. What? She was forced to go to one of those boarding camps, which were all around the US to take all of these Native American children to make them more suitable for American society. Bet they didn't teach you that in high school. They teach us all about the concentration camps and what the Nazis did, but they refused to even touch on the topic of the concentration camps that they had for Native American children and how they made them into Americans. Hmm. Interesting. Misty's dad, Charles, ended up upbringing the family after this and moving to Billings to hopefully give Misty a better shot at life. Billings, when you first move here, it just seems like the perfect place to raise a family. It seems so safe. It just seems like a good area to live and to raise your family in. So I am not surprised that her dad, Charles, decided to move his entire family to Billings because that's exactly what I did. When Billings didn't work out for their family, they ended up moving to the Blackfoot Reservation in Washington. Her father once again had good intentions to give Misty a better life and to give her just the start that she needed to be successful in her life. But sadly, moving to the Blackfeet Reservation ended up being one of the worst decisions. This decision would leave Misty with an event that took place in her life that would leave her with a lifetime of trauma and depression and PTSD. 
she ended up getting gang raped by a group of guys on this reservation um, as a young child and sadly this isn't uncommon the statistic for a native american woman to be raped in her lifetime is 96 percent and sadly the chances of the rapist getting convicted on his first offense of raping a native american woman is eight percent so there's a super duper high chance of a native american woman getting raped and a super duper low chance of anything ever coming from it and sadly that's what happened to misty one thing i can strongly relate to misty is that she was proud of her native american heritage as am i i'm not full native i'm half native but i am very very proud of the percentage that i am misty just so happened to be a direct descendant from chief heavy runner and she wore that so proudly she made a promise to herself after this event took place that she would be the first native american actress to make it big in hollywood and she would show all the future little Native American girls that they can do it despite where they come from, despite any challenges they've gone through. She wanted to pave the way for them and I appreciate this so much. She got her big break in acting after high school after a scout saw her performing in a play that she actually wrote and directed herself and was performing in it. Her first big break in Hollywood was the movie Skins. And Missy was very particular when taking acting gigs. It's very easy to get caught up and just take anything you want just because it's so cutthroat in Hollywood to even get a spot. It's so hard to make it in Hollywood that most people when they get out there, they will take anything they get, any extra, anything just to build up their resume and make it in Hollywood. Missy was different in this fact because she refused to take any role that portrayed her as a stereotypical Native American or promoted any stereotypes that were already out there about Native Americans, she refused this. Sometimes she would even go years without any work just because she wouldn't play the drunken Indian, she wouldn't play um, any other stereotypical things that sometimes they wanted as an extra or whatever she refused she was not going to portray native americans in a bad light she wanted to be a good light and a good role model despite her big break she was still battling with mental health issues with depression ptsd anxiety she was pretty medicated for this but it still crept back up and definitely was a dark cloud hanging over any achievement or any light that she had she was receiving an award at the 2013 Golden Globes and sadly this day was nothing more than another tragedy in her life. What started off as a dream come true for her to be invited to the Golden Globes, be known as an actress, walking the red carpet, being in a gown and everything was taken away because a member of one of the producers, Harvey Weinstein, one of his CEOs pushed Misty allegedly into a bathroom and proceeded to rape her in front of a bunch of other guys that also worked for Harvey Weinstein and basically humiliated her in front of every known producer. Harvey Weinstein was a very influential person at that time. He had a lot of power, he had a lot of pull. And just the fact that one of his CEOs could go on to rape someone who's supposed to be accepting an award in front of all of their other colleagues and all they're doing is cheering him on. The saddest part is after this happened, Misty was mortified. She was just beyond, she, she couldn't believe what just happened. Like how did this just happen? she went back to her seat because she was so embarrassed and she knew if she said something that she would have all of hollywood against her basically she would be throwing her career away so she sat and just sobbed meanwhile the perpetrator who did this to her is getting high fives on the way back to his seat could you imagine how humiliated you would feel to know that all these other people just witness you get raped and are giving this guy a high five for what he did to you on a night when you're supposed to be accepting an award. We're not really gonna get too into the Hollywood industry because as we all know, they're pretty exposed now for their need to feel powerful and sex rings, child pornography, child um, molestation, the list goes on and on of what happens in Hollywood because 
All of the power are in these producers and there's so many people who just want to make it big. Some people will do anything it takes just to be seen and just to be in that movie or be in that show and it can turn very dark because now all the power is in this person and for poor Misty, she just had such a special moment just ripped away from her for someone else's selfish needs. And the fact that she was too mortified to even go to police or say anything or do anything, you just have to put yourself in her shoes of how horrible she must have felt. This was before the Me Too movement. This was in 2013, so before, you know, people were getting exposed left and right for what they did. Um, she knew that if she were to go up against Harvey Weinstein, her career would be over. No one would work with her. He would demolish her career. He would smear her name. He would launch the biggest smear campaign he could imagine just to try to discredit her. And he had very expensive lawyers. So it's kind of like, what are you gonna do basically? She was so distraught. She ended up telling her mom and father about what happened and they strongly, strongly urged her to go to police. They could not believe this. She still had DNA on the dress that she was wearing that night of the perpetrator and they strongly encouraged her to go to police. But once again, she was too stricken with fear. After this, Missy started spiraling out of control. She cold turkeyed all of her medication for anxiety, depression, PTSD, cold turkeyed it all. As you know, that's not usually the best thing to do, especially when you're dealing with mental health because these pills are formulated to mess up the chemicals in your brain and when you stop that and your brain is dependent on these things, it can sometimes make your symptoms and situation so much worse. And when you're dealing with mental health, what seems like someone acting erratically is really this person's feelings. And when they're in a state of paranoia or manic episode, it's very, very hard to talk any sense into this person. Misty's family on October 5th, 2014, were very scared for her life and they decided to call the police because they didn't know what she would do and Misty ended up leaving. This wasn't Misty's first run-in with police. I believe a time before she had a run-in with police in a previous encounter when Misty was dealing with some mental health problems, she had an encounter with police where she was detained and taken to treatment aka a mental hospital while she was in the car her family was watching but the auburn police didn't know that they were watching and they were actually taunting misty making faces at her through the window talking derogatory things to her mocking her just completely belittling her when she's going to treatment for mental health and is already having enough difficulties as it is. The strange thing about this is that when her family went to see her in the hospital, Misty was brutally beat. Her face was beat up, her eyes were black, and this wasn't how she was last seen by her family in the police car. This was after they left with her. So they decided to go up to the nurses and ask them what happened to their daughter's face. Why is she beat up? And the nurses told her that Misty arrived at the hospital like this. So somewhere in between her getting detained by police officers that are supposed to be helping her. So somewhere between Misty getting detained by police and ending up at the hospital, she was badly, badly beat up. The family was very worried at this point that something was not right. Either Harvey Weinstein knew where she was living and had some sort of influence on police, but just the overwhelming fear of not knowing and not even feeling like the people that are supposed to help you are helping you. Misty knew that she couldn't depend on police even when she was having a manic episode. She feared them for obvious reasons. And so when they come to help her go to a treatment facility to get her medication altered or to help her, she is terrified and me personally i've been to a treatment facility for mental health and it's not nice it's not a nice feeling especially when you're forced to go against your will um it's basically at least the one i went to was like a prison of crazy people you couldn't see the sunlight 
you couldn't go outside you had a bedtime the lights were out you could only take cold um 30 second showers when you press the thing and the water would go for 30 seconds like on a sink but it was in a shower so you had to keep pressing that it was freezing cold. It's not It's not a fun experience. It's supposed to be, you know, help you get your mind right, but it actually does more damage than good, at least to me. I'm traumatized from that place. So I can fully understand why when Misty's parents called the police to send her back, she dipped. She was out. She was gone. She did not want to deal with the police. She didn't want to go to the hospital. She was basically manic at that point and she left. When Misty left this time, it was different. She went to her sister's house and she was seen walking from the apartment from her sister's house into some woods and that was the last time anyone had seen Misty. The next day, her father tried to file a police report with the Auburn police and they told her that there was no proof that Misty just is missing due to any causes that would be suspicious. They refused to open a missing persons report for her or do anything because According to them, you couldn't prove that she is actually missing or something happened to her. She could have just wandered off by herself and doesn't want to talk to you. So they refused it on that point and the father tried the very next day to get one out about her. After the family got a cold shoulder from police, they decided to take it into their own hands. They wanted cadaver dogs, they wanted people to help search, they didn't want the police anywhere near this investigation because when you get a response like that from the one people you think can actually help you, basically you know you're on your own and sadly that's what happens to a lot of Native American families when a Native goes missing. They're on their own. The police not enough evidence to do a missing persons report or they simply just don't care. I really hope that you guys can hopefully understand the prejudice against Native Americans and this is founded from literally when the colonizers came because there was a severe hatred for the Native Americans. And I encourage you guys to do some research on your history because a lot of the stuff that's going on right now that people are all, oh my gosh, I can't believe the government's doing this to us. How is this possible? Sitting here knowing Native American history and what the Native Americans went through, basically verbatim of what's happening in today's world. So I strongly encourage you guys to look into this history, the real, real history and It'll just really open your eyes about how this country was truly founded. And was it really free? Misty's poor, poor family. Um, the family went out to search for Misty themselves. On October 16th, 2014, Misty's uncle decided to form his own search party with members of the tribe. He wanted to go through where searchers had already searched to make sure that no stone was left uncovered. They wanted to know every single spot they wanted to search everything just to make sure that they were not missing a single thing they were dedicated to trying to find misty during this time misty's purse was found by an embankment and her poor uncle had to tie a rope to a tree and let himself off of the cliff to try to find his niece at 8.32 on October 16th, 2014, Misty's body was found at the bottom of the embankment. Her family and friends were completely divided on whether or not this was an accident, whether or not she committed suicide, or if this was a inside job and it was a murder. Many people believed that the police did have something to do with it because of how vocal Misty was about her first encounter with them when she was badly beat up and didn't remember what happened to her. All she knows is she was being detained and then woke up in the hospital completely beat up. She was very vocal about this. She was very vocal about how the police treated Native Americans differently and how the prejudice was still very, very strong in America, especially with law enforcement. And some people thought that possibly the law enforcement officers just wanted to shut her up and get rid of her possibly with a payout from Harvey Weinstein. No one really knew. The other suspicious thing was that the Auburn police claimed that they were the ones that found Misty when her own uncle was the one who found her and had to let himself off of a cliff just to see her body. But yet the Auburn police took all the credit for this 
And they also tried to paint Misty as a stereotypical Native American with a vodka bottle next to her. They even released her toxicology report to the news and to the tabloids before they even told Misty's family. Her blood alcohol was 0.33 when her autopsy came back in. This is enough alcohol to influence blackouts, inability to walk. Basically, a loss of consciousness is this level. The legal drinking limit is 0 0.08, so she was 0 0.33. She was blackout drunk, and it was undetermined how she died. It was blunt force trauma. They weren't able to decide if that was from her falling to her death or if it could have happened before. Her father, being such a sweet, understanding man, took the blame off of everyone and just said that this wasn't a suicide, it wasn't intentional, it wasn't an inside job. Missy was so fearful of the police that she was running at night to safety. And sadly, she accidentally fell off of this embankment, possibly due to how high her alcohol blood was. And this isn't to say that Misty just gets written off as another drunken Indian because knowing her background and knowing her life story, you can feel sympathetic for Misty because she went through a lot. A lot of people just want to put titles on natives as whatever, but they don't want to look at the history of what these people actually went through to cause them to have these problems. People don't just come up with these things on their own. Obviously, she was suffering from a lot of trauma in her life, possibly from being raped on multiple occasions and being discredited and police never helping her out and just getting a cold shoulder from the world in general. Her dad just put everything to rest and said that this was just a tragic, tragic accident because this cliff, you can't see what's on the other side and you could think you're still walking and then the next thing you know, you're falling to your death. Sadly, Misty was not the last person that has fallen off of this cliff and she wasn't the first either. So it's definitely a dangerous area and she's not the only victim that this embankment has taken. It's just very, very sad to think that she was so terrified of what could happen if police found her that she ended up accidentally falling to her death. And if that doesn't show you guys how real that this fear and treatment to natives are from law enforcement, then I don't know what does. The story is just so, so sad because she did make it big and she was a Native American actress and she did make it in Hollywood. And sadly, all of that was just tarnished by society and what happened to her and the trauma that she went through and it was really really hard for her to see the light at the end of the tunnel with this huge dark cloud constantly over her and to just think of the mental state she was in cold turkey and all, her, all of her medication for all of these different issues that she was battling it's just so heartbreaking i'm glad her family has came and made peace with this whether or not there was any inside job and we don't really know i'm going to take her dad's word for it because he knew her the best and he was there witnessing it while it happened and his story does make sense i never want to think that someone would purposely murder or do these things but it does happen a lot I just don't get this feeling from this case i think she was at the wrong place at the wrong time and was just in a in a manic hysteria and wasn't thinking and it was dark and she was very intoxicated and it just ended badly so she did make a very big impact and she is just such a role model for young natives to never stop fighting and to get the help you need it and to just follow your dreams she probably had a door slammed in her face so many times in the hollywood industry and the fact that she actually made it and did receive an award and is known in hollywood just paves the way for all future native american actresses actors that want to get out there and really show what we're made of so i hope you guys enjoyed this video it's not a mystery we do know how it ends so hopefully you guys will get some peace of mind let me know in the comments down below your thoughts if you guys have any theories make sure to leave them i love to read your guys's comments and and I hope you guys enjoy this video and I will see you in my next one.